Namaste, it's Renee, and welcome to my podcast, Peace, Love, Abundance. Happy spring to everyone. I am doing today's podcast based on spring. Spring has already been here for a couple weeks, so hopefully you've had some time to kind of feel that spring is in the air. You might be even starting to notice that your body is adjusting your body, your mind, and your spirit. That's what's so amazing about Ayurveda as we look at spring through the Ayurveda lens is Ayurveda encompasses the body, mind, and spirit. It's the whole picture, the whole puzzle. And spring tends to be the kapha time of year. When you get into the three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha, spring is very much the kapha time of year. Kapha is the energetic force of water and earth and how they even come together. So after a long winter, when we're starting to thaw out, we start to feel this water and earth mixing together. And when water and earth mix together, we get mud. So coming out of winter, we often feel very kind of stuck, like you're stuck in the mud. We can feel heavy. We can feel thick or stagnant, a hard time getting started or moving, even though we're seeing spring springing all around us, which is definitely enlightening and sometimes motivating, but sometimes we still feel stuck because we're still in that transition of how do we let go of the heaviness of winter and open up to the lightness that spring starts to bring to us. The days are longer. While they're not the longest yet, the days are longer. We have less darkness When we went into winter, our bodies did what our bodies needed to do going into winter to prepare for more darkness and less light. It being cold, our bodies, the metabolism slowed down, kind of like a bear preparing to hibernate. Everything started to slow down, and that's our body's way of surviving the darkness and the cold of winter and being indoors and all that goes along with that. But whenever spring comes along and we're starting to thaw out, we feel the heaviness of winter, but yet we're ready to embrace spring and also possibly prepare ourselves for what's next, summer, right? Anyways, let's not jump too far ahead, but talking a little bit more about how we need to reduce some of the kapha. Because this time of year is the kapha time of year. So even if you don't tend towards kapha on a normal basis, or that isn't quite the dosha that you usually relate with, kapha can come in and be a part of our lives this time of year, whether it is part of our daily dosha or not. It is in all of us as we start to melt and warm up. Part of kapha is is mucus and allergies and edema, like excess water in your body, inflammation and swelling. So some of that heaviness we feel is excess water, right? The water mixed with earth creating mud. So how do we start to reduce kapha? How can we get things moving and reduce the heaviness in our bodies and our minds and our spirits? What I mean by that, even in our minds and in our spirits, we might feel a little bit lethargic, unmotivated, even defeated, some depression. Winter, the heaviness of winter can bring on some of the depression. And by spring, we're just kind of over it. We're over all the depression, but we're not quite sure how to cleanse that. While the lightness is definitely refreshing, how do we truly transition into full spring and the lightness of it and letting go of some of this depression. This depression is still a presence of kapha in our bodies and feeling waterlogged and holding on to too much weight after a long winter. Our bodies naturally did take on weight. Don't worry about it. It's completely natural. We all go through it through winter. We take on a little bit of weight for that hibernation and to survive. But now it's time to let go of some of that heaviness. But how do we do that when our digestion still seems to be sluggish and our metabolism is slow? So how do we give it that kickstart that's been building up all winter 
to protect us and keep us warm, but how do we kickstart our bodies to possibly speed up letting go of the long winter? So some ideas are dry brushing is one of my favorites. So after a long winter and you're wanting to wear maybe um, clothes that are a little more revealing even to where you're starting to wear shorts, shorter skirts, shorter sleeved clothes. Our skin can look very sluggish after a long winter, also pale, especially if you live in those colder states. I'm from Colorado, so I totally know what it feels like to come out of winter and just feel so pale and even looking at your skin, your skin is not glowing. I'm also a licensed esthetician on top of being an herbalist and a yoga instructor. So dry brushing can get your skin to wake up, help slough off some of the dead skin cells that have been collecting all winter. And dry brushing is so amazing that it even gets your lymphatic system flowing, your circulatory. So it's even more than just the surface. When you dry brush, you're creating energy that's going deeper than skin deep. It's getting all the way to your circulation and your lymph. And you're trying to get all of that moving to help bring color to your skin, circulation to your body, get the dry, dead skin off of your body after the long winter. And dry brushing can be really practical. You just go out, there's specific dry brushes. If you Google them, you will see several brands that come up. And at first it can feel harsh to your body because especially if you've never dry brushed before or maybe it's been a long winter and you haven't been taking care of your skin because you're wearing thicker clothes and you're not as worried about it. It can be very stimulating your first few times. For some people, that stimulation stays pretty hypersensitive all the time. And yet it can become a little bit addictive because that stimulation, you know that there's something going on, right? It's that feeling of um, stimulating your body and feeling very much alive, Anyways, I just want to put it out there that if you start dry brushing and it seems a little intense to you, keep going, keep trying, maybe do a lighter touch or maybe you don't spend as much time at first, but the more you do it and your body gets used to it, it kind of becomes an addiction. Just like yoga, the first time you ever took a yoga class, you may have felt a lot of intensity and overwhelmingness from it. But yet, the more you continued to go to yoga, you started to fall in love with it. So dry brushing is just another practice like yoga to stimulate your body and your skin. Dry brushing is a technique. You should always dry brush towards your heart. So if you start with your toes and your feet, you literally start with your toes and your feet, and you're doing sweeping motions up words towards your heart. So you dry brush towards your heart. This you can also Google. Not only can you Google what a dry brush is or looks like, but you can Google a technique. There's several YouTube videos out there on how to do it. But if you don't need the visual and you understand the theory of dry brushing towards your heart. So once you've done one leg from the toes all the way up into your hips, do the other leg from your toes all the way up into your hips. When you do your arms, you go from the fingers and sweep up all the way up into your shoulders, even your torso. So if you're going to do your backside, you're sweeping from your glutes up towards your heart. And if you're going to sweep your neck a little bit, obviously you're going down, right? So you're going to sweep from the the nape of your, your neck and skull where they meet. You're going to dry brush down towards your heart. That's really kind of the only place you brush downward is anything above your heart, obviously, right? Stomach. Also, I highly encourage you dry brush your stomach in a circular motion from right to left. This also helps encourage digestion. Digestion moves through your body right to left. So do a few swipes around the middle of your belly, your intestines and such, where all those organs are. Dry brush from right to left, and then your final swoop, as you go right to left, you'll come up right back up into the heart. Okay, so that's dry brushing. Very simple. Doesn't take any product except for the brush, and your brush can be timeless. As long as you don't lose it or contaminate it, 
that thing is timeless. You don't have to continue to buy more product. In other words, you don't have to continue to buy more shampoo or facial cleanser. Your dry brush will last you several years if you take care of it. And so it's a very affordable option just to get things moving. It's going to, again, get your circulation going, slough off dead skin cells. It's a form of exfoliation, as well as even getting your digestion going right to left and bringing everything towards your heart, bringing that energy towards your heart. It's a great way to stimulate your body. Very simple. I suggest doing it before every shower. So every day before you shower. Sometimes it's not as easy to remember. Don't beat yourself up if you forget, but make it a point to try and dry brush before each and every shower or bath if you're taking baths. Other things to get our circulation or our spring step going would even also be to use a neti pot. This time of year, there's a lot of allergens in the air because Spring is making Mother Nature come alive. There's a lot of allergens floating around. So a neti pot, go ahead, run some uh, saline through your sinuses and clean out your sinuses with the neti pot. Any pollens that are starting to build up in your sinuses or anything stagnant from winter after having seasonal colds and even indoor allergies or mold allergies this time of year along with the snow melting or rains coming in, there's a little bit more mold this time of year. So getting the neti pot to flow through your sinuses and flush out any allergens that might be in your sinuses. And then speaking of allergens, allergens like pollen are protein. One reason why our bodies react to it is because our bodies aren't capable of breaking down that protein. And so enzymes, there's such thing as enzymes. We naturally have enzymes in our belly. But after a long winter when our metabolism and our digestion slows down, then the enzymes in our belly may not be quite at peak performance to be able to digest protein and also allergens as far as uh, pollen, molds, all of that stuff is protein. So focusing on digestion in your belly. The dry brushing again, I mentioned, do a few circles right to left to get your digestion going. You could actually take enzymes if you want. Now this is going to require you going out and buying some enzymes, but there are enzymes out there that you can take in supplement form to help speed up your digestion. You can also add more spices to your cooking, even warming spices, ginger, cayenne, black pepper, peppers in general, uh, cumin, onion, garlic, leeks, turmeric, anything you can do to kind of up the pungency of your food, and that often stimulates the enzymes, natural enzymes in your belly to help you break down protein. Also, moving on, another one of my big favorites is tongue scraping. So as you're promoting these enzymes to break down pollen and protein and molds in your body, after all of that has been digested, we need to eliminate, right? We eliminate through several channels. There's our endocrine, skin, our bowels, bladder, lungs are also a big, huge eliminative channel. Women, our menses, our monthly period is a form of cleansing. We monthly let go of that lining. If you ever notice that your flow, your menstruation is a little bit heavier this time of year, it can be partly because your body has some excess to get rid of after the long winter. It's a form of cleansing and elimination. Also, your tongue might have a little extra thickness on it like mucus and buildup from your body, digesting and wanting to cleanse and let go and eliminate. So I highly suggest tongue scraping. I even did a whole podcast on tongue scraping. The name of the podcast is, if you only do one Ayurvedic thing a day, do this, or something to that fact. That's what the podcast is called. 
Uh, if you look at the description, it'll mention tongue scraping in the description. But I have a whole podcast on tongue scraping because that's how amazing it is. I highly recommend you listen to that podcast after this. Your tongue, the residue that builds up on your tongue is part of your body trying to eliminate things because your mouth, your lungs, your mouth, your sinuses, those are all eliminative channels, which is also why when we have aller- allergic reactions, our nose gets very mucousy, stuffed up, and stuck. Again, it's kapha, that feeling of being heavy and stuck and stagnant from the long winter, and we need to get that out. And also sweat. If you haven't been sweating all winter, you need to figure out a way to sweat. Go to some hot yoga, heated yoga. Go spend some time outdoors in the sun. Run. Walk vigorously. Take a hot bath. That'll stimulate some sweat. Drink hot tea in the hot sun. But you need to get sweating so that you can get some of that water, that edema flowing in out of your body. And along with that, I already mentioned sunshine. Get out there in the light. The more light that you can consume will naturally help your body shed. It will reaffirm to your body, mind, and spirit that yes, spring is here, less darkness, more lightness, and it's time to let go of the heaviness. So get out there, start promoting a little bit more vitamin D, expose yourself to some sunshine. Now, as always, moderation is key. If you are going to be out in the sun for a long duration, sunscreen is probably recommended or wearing sleeves or something like that. But most of us coming out of winter have not seen any direct sun for several months. So go ahead and allow yourself to at least maybe get 15 to 20 minutes of direct sunshine without any sunscreens. I know some of you out there might think that's a little risky, but if you're doing just 15 to 20 minutes of unprotected sunshine, it can be good for you. But if you know you're going to go beyond that, then by all means, wear a hat, have some long sleeves with you, or some sunscreen. But it doesn't hurt to get some direct sunshine. And especially if you're starting with just 15 to 20 minutes a day, your body can start to build up a little more tolerance. The vitamin D in your body starts to build up. Some of the depression starts to go away. Avoiding the sun is sometimes just as hard on our body as allowing it to get sun. But we don't want too much and you don't want too little. With everything that I promote, I promote the Goldilocks and the Three Bears theory. And that is you don't want too much and you don't want too little. You want just right. Same with if you're going to cook with some more spices. Remember, you don't want to overcook yourself and stimulate too much pitta to where you have um, heartburn by using too many peppers and spices. You need to play with recipes. Know that you can always add more. So if you make a recipe that's a little bit bland, know that you can add more. But if you put too many spices in your cooking, it's hard to take away, right? So use your mind, use your thoughts, practice, and even sometimes error. We learn from our mistakes, so don't beat yourself up if you do make a mistake here and there. But if you are trying a few of these things to help you transition into spring, you can even do some spring cleaning. However, I'm not a big fan of harsh cleanses. If it's a cleanse where you starve yourself or you're not taking in enough protein or you're only doing juices and no fiber, then you need to reevaluate. Don't go too harsh with your cleansing. Moderation is key. And I'm even a big advocate of being able to cleanse your body through dry brushing, neti pot, sweat, tongue scraping, and get some sunshine. These are all things that we can all do to promote natural cleansing in our bodies. Our bodies know how to cleanse. And with spring here, your body should be able to transition with that. But these are some things you can do to support your body. We have a relationship with our own body. And whatever you can do to support your body's natural instinct is what I'm talking about here. 
We can't force anything that's not ready to go, but we can support it, encourage it, and treat ourselves with love, kindness, compassion, and a nice daily habit of doing just these few things. And you'll be amazed as to how well your body might transition into spring and wake up and feel lighter, less heavy, a little bit more joy in your life and happiness because we all deserve it. We all do. So with that, this is where I'll leave you today. If you have any questions, as always, you can get a hold of me directly. My website, www.reneestahl.online. Email address is plastered all over it, so you can email me. You can put comments in the show notes for this podcast or whatever method you want to use. There are several ways to contact me. Let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, or even feedback. If there's something you want to share, a beautiful story, whatever it is, share it with me. And today, though, I'll leave you with peace, love, abundance, and namaste. Namaste.